this unique colour film of the invasion fleet on D-Day at Southampton was probably taken by sailors of the Royal Canadian Navy, which might explain how it remained undiscovered in a French archive until only a few years ago. Southampton was the principal embarkation port for the British assault force, and it is estimated that between D-Day and the end of the war, three and a half million military personnel passed through Southampton. From the 31st of May onwards, and according to a highly detailed timetable, troops began to make their way down to the coast and embark onto the ships and landing craft that would take them to Normandy. Vehicles were often loaded early and troops on foot embarked only just before D-Day. The troops landing on D-Day were followed by forces landing on subsequent days, forming a steady stream moving down towards the south coast that in many places continued for months. Southampton Eastern Docks was used for larger ships as well as personnel ships, hospital carriers, motor transport ships, motor transport coasters, train ferries and stores coasters. The Isle of Wight and High Ferry Terminals were also used. The film shows how Southampton Town Quay was used for embarking troops, probably from marshalling Area C with the closest camp on Southampton Common. However, bottlenecks would develop around all of the ports if all the main vehicles and supplies were routed through them and along the length of the south coast, hards were built specifically to serve landing craft designed to land tanks and other vehicles directly onto the Normandy beaches. In the film Her Majesty's Canadian Landing Craft 299 of the 2nd Canadian Flotilla can be seen loaded with Stormont Dundas Glengarian Highlanders of Canada heading for Nan White sector of Juno Beach in Normandy at Bermier-sur-Mer. Lieutenant William B. McGregor, Royal Canadian Navy Volunteer Reserve, who is described as a mere boy in the official war diary, is in command of the landing craft, commissioned and delivered under the terms of the Lend-Lease Act. He informs the men that excluding the landing craft, there are over 3,000 ships in the Armada, and for the first time the men realise the magnitude of the undertaking. Nevertheless, they are in good spirits, and on the 5th of June, the serial commander is awakened by the skipper singing happy birthday to him, much to the amusement of the rest of the crew. At 1500 hours, the message everybody has been waiting for finally arrives. The invasion is on. As well as infantry, the Canadians brought armour. The first hussars loaded their tanks on landing craft at Gosport, and steamed to Southampton where they tied up at the docks. The troops were marched to the Naffy where they could write their letters and then given another route march around the docks to stretch their legs. The war diary includes the reference that they will be involved in the initial assault that will eventually free the peoples from the yoke of oppression. The 6th Battalion Durham Light Infantry were camped in woods just outside Romsey, north of Southampton. They started the day with a church parade and left for the docks on the 3rd of June, where they were greeted at the pier by the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, who wished them Godspeed. Overlord was delayed, so it gave the men an opportunity to have a good wash and hot meal. The landing craft sailed on the night of the 5th to 6th of June to within sight of the French coast. The 86 Hertfordshire Yeomanry describes how the leading flotillas of Forsgy slipped their moorings and proceeded down Southampton Water on Operation Overlord. The 9th Canadian Brigade headquarters pulled out of Southampton at 1100 hours on June the 5th to rendezvous at Cowshot with thousands of landing craft as far as the eye could see. At 1430 hours, the convoy left anchor and made their way for the coast of France. There was a strong wind and the sea was pretty rough for landing craft. Sea sickness tablets were issued, but if they were taken 50 it would make no difference. More than one person looked like death warmed up. Final messages were read to those who did not have their faces in vomit bags. The landing table, the result of months' work, held up. Every vehicle was in its allotted place aboard the various craft, but anything else to be added would need a shoehorn. All the ships participating in Operation Neptune, the crossing of the English Channel, left their home ports at different times according to their geographical location in Great Britain, and had to make their own way. 
In the film, the Cowshot lightship is used as a reference point for ships leaving Southampton Water and was twice damaged by landing craft. A large gathering area was planned, codenamed Z, nicknamed Piccadilly Circus, with reference to the traffic jams of central London. It was located 30 kilometres to the southeast of the Isle of Wight, with the Armada separating into five convoys heading for their respective landing beaches through channels maintained by minesweepers. The Stormont, Dundas, Glengarion and Highlanders embarked for Great Britain on 19th of July 1941. On D-Day, 6th of June 1944, they landed on Juno Beach as part of the 9th Infantry Brigade, 3rd Canadian Light Infantry, and continued to fight in northwest Europe until the end of the war. Landing craft 299 was not so lucky, but carried on until the 25th of June 1944, when it was mined on the port side, holding the engine room and mess deck.